Uh, investors face much investment uncertainty today with many facing difficulty in making informed investment decisions. Given the current market volatility, asset managers have the responsibility to advise investors of the best investment strategies to adopt. Earlier, I spoke to Doug Matthews, investment professional at Marriott Asset Management, to find out more. Doug, thanks for your time. Now, the South African economy is facing many headwinds and many people are saying the outlook is uncertain. I mean, we saw the government slightly downgrading its growth uh, forecast. In this environment, where are you guys standing in terms of your overall investment strategy? Yeah. Which assets are likely to perform? Yeah, I think um, investors today certainly are faced with, with a, a lot of economic and investment uncertainty out there. Mm -hmm. um, not only do investors have to choose between over 1,000 different unit trusts, yeah. There's also numerous economic variables which could all have a significant impact on markets in the years ahead. Um, if you just look at America, uh, you know, the fiscal cliff issue has only been partially resolved mm. and they've got the debt ceiling issue coming up again later this year, well, which caused so, much, does, so yeah. much chaos in markets in 2011. Yeah. Um, if you look at, at the Eurozone, uh, that, that economy is struggling at the moment and the big challenge that region faces is trying to uh, to manage down those debt levels yeah. in those regions without um, triggering a severe recession. Absolutely, and that all impacts our markets here in South Africa. Absolutely. Uh, we're part of a global economy now. Um, things that happen in, in those regions all have a big impact on the South African market. Mm -hmm. And we just feel at the moment, given the uncertainty in the market, mm -hmm. investors will be best served by an adopting an investment strategy based on a bottom-up selection of companies right. uh, that are likely to be re resilient to the unexpected events I've been chatting Explain about. Explain yourself, bottom-up, what do you mean? This, this approach really means looking at the companies that you're investing in rather right. than trying to have a broad macro view of what's going on right. out there. Right. You know, leave, leave that alone and really concentrate on where you're investing your money from a stock by stock level. Who are performers? Where are the strong managers and that kind of thing? That's what you're asking really investors yeah, you, to do. You, you're wanting to invest in good, solid companies that are able to perform consistently regardless of the, the economic environment which mm. they're operating mm. in. Mm. Um, and there are numerous examples, both locally and offshore, of these, these type of companies who, who will be largely unaffected by what happens in, in America in terms of resolving the fiscal cliff where the right. Eurozone breaks up just because of the solid companies that they are and the, and the nature of their brands and the products they produce. So you're saying really it's a stock pickers market, but across sectors, would you be able to pick particular themes? Yeah, I think that um, you want to invest in companies where consumers have to spend their money today. Right. Um, okay. The times are tough. Yeah. Uh, consumers, both locally and international, have come under pressure, mm -hmm. um, and you really want to in be invested in companies who who produce basic necessities yeah. with strong brands because you can be confident that consumers are still going to spend uh, their money there at the end of the month. Right. Consumer facing. Don't touch the miners, you're saying. Um, it's a difficult one there. <laughs> you know, mining company profits is, is to a large extent influenced by what happens in the global economy. Yeah. And as I mentioned right in the beginning of the show, there's just so many different factors that could impact um, how the global economy performs going forward, that yeah. trying to have a reasonable expectation of how a mining company is going to perform over the next five years yeah. is difficult. But even the consumer as well is facing many headwinds. I mean, I was reading a number of articles today talking about the fact that the Reserve Bank this year is unlikely to touch uh, those interest rates. But at the same time, we do know about the indebtedness of the consumer. We do know also about uh, the high cost of living that's going on, even though the inflation numbers do seem to be saying inflation is going to be stable. So even on that front, you'll be challenged to try and find value within that basket of uh, of, of, of stocks. Absolutely. I think the consumer certainly is coming under pressure. Uh, fortunately, we've got very low interest rates in South Africa, which, uh, which has uh, given some relief to consumers. They're also accessing unsecured credit at the moment, which has helped. Yeah. Uh, and that is why you know, our emphasis with regards to the companies we're choosing to invest in are, are really companies that produce your basic necessity. Mm. Um, the, the type of companies that produce goods that consumers have to buy, mm. regardless mm. of good times mm. or bad times. Mm. Your mm. food producers, yeah. telecommunication companies, 
alcohol producers, yeah. the likes of British American tobacco, etc. Those type of bottom drawer companies. We still companies. need to talk. We still need to eat. We need to still need to yeah, phone our friends and all those kind of things. Absolutely. Let's talk broad valuations of the yes. market. Now you never get any kind of agreement on whether our market is overvalued or not. But you are saying actually, even from that perspective, don't look at the overall index. You go drill deep into the companies. But overall, how do you see the JSC playing out at the moment? Yeah, I think from a big picture perspective, we don't see much value in the local market. Mm -hmm. um, equity dividend yields are, are well below the, um, the historic averages. Yeah. Property yields are low, bond yields are low. Uh, but the situation offshore is completely different. Right. Uh, offshore inve investors are able to invest in quality first world mega cap stocks of the likes of Procter & Gamble, right. Nestle, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, all international brands on very attractive valuations, yields in the region of 35 to 4%. Uh, which is well above their historic averages. Sure. And those companies today are in, in very healthy positions. So you're talking uh, offshore developed world, you're not talking offshore emerging? No, offshore developed world. Um, there's a subtlety there because a lot of those companies that I've mentioned have a big pres presence in emerging markets. Sure. So they still stand to, to benefit from uh, the um, higher levels of economic growth in, in emerging markets. Yeah. Uh, but they are well-governed um, companies with incredibly powerful brands. Just to give you an example of one company, a um, favorite of ours is Nestle. Yeah. That company owns over 8,000 brands. Uh, it sells a billion products a day in 132 different countries okay. around the world. Okay. 29 of those brands generate that company in the region of $1 billion of revenue each year. Right. You can look at Procter & Gamble, they've got 25 brands that um, generate the, the company in the region of a billion dollars of revenue mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. the, the items that they sell range from household necessities like uh, Pampers nappies right. to toothbrushes right. and toothpaste uh, to batteries and shavers. Yeah. Just yeah. interesting to note that Procter & Gamble's um, Duracell battery is the largest battery manufacturer in the world and, the and 25 billion batteries are consumed each year. Absolutely. The Procter & Gamble Gillette brand has 70% of the global market share wow. for razors and blades globally. Right, right. Um, these are products we have to spend our money on. Unfortunately, we go through them rapidly and have to yeah. be replaced. Keep buying And again. as a result, these companies have the ability to produce growing dividends and, and profits even in tough economic conditions. Absolutely. That sounds exciting. Last time I checked, the world's population was still growing, never mind uh, declining populations in your Japans, in your yes. Germany's, and those other developed markets. But, but let's, so that's equities. So it looks good internationally. Where do you bring in property? Where would you put property? And in terms of that uh, portfolio construction, what percentage do you give it then? Um, in terms of property, we see a decent value in international real estate. Sure. A developed market. Again, once again. not at home. Not at Internationally. Home. Internationally, you're getting yields in the region of 4 to 5%, which is about on their hysteric averages of quality companies um, of the likes of Westfield, the Lincoln in Hong Kong, or Rio Can in Canada. Right. Locally, however, uh, you've got um, low yields relative to where they've been historically. You look mm. at a company like Growth Point, um, yeah. probably the, 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 the company with the best quality property portfolio in mm. South Africa, mm. its yield is only 6%. Right. And inflation is 6%. Yeah, and investors also have to remember that that income stream is fully taxable. Sure. Uh, so over the long term, we feel that at current valuations, getting a real return from an investment in listed property locally yeah. is unlikely over the long term. So that's term. a low percentage in terms of your allocation in your portfolio. Yeah, we would, we would have maximum exposure to maybe offshore equities and, and international real estate, but, but very little, if any, exposure to Where property Where do you put locally. bonds then? Where do you put bonds? Bonds and property um, are very similar in terms of their valuations and, sure. and how they behave. Um, bond yields are also very low in South Africa today. They're below 7%, the 10-year bond yield, which is the lowest yields have been for, for approximately 40 years. Once again, we feel that's too high a price to yeah. pay for that investment. Yeah. And we would be wary of investing in fixed interest bonds locally. Okay. We're talking government bonds, yeah. Government bonds, Government yes. corporate? We wouldn't touch corporate, um, you know, corporate bonds, you are getting a, a slight pickup of yield. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of fixed interest bonds, the yields are still still low today. Yeah. yeah. Internationally? Internationally, um, like South Africa, the international bond market is also very expensive. Yeah. You yeah. know, the US 10-year bond today is 2%. Yeah. Those yields have been yeah. declining for yeah. 35 yeah. years. 
Um, so, so we would avoid international bonds as well. Absolutely. Interesting you say that because last year most investors got it wrong. Most of the money was in bonds, fixed income, and then it turned out who was the best performer. It was equities, it was property. Yeah, I think that um, investments in, in quality companies, predominantly offshore, yeah. is likely to serve investors best in the years ahead.